you were so inspiring to me in terms of like, this guy is really leading this thing. I was waiting for the butt. No, no <laughs> butts at all. But, you oh. know, oh. Dive into retro video game hardware. <laughs> We're good? Yeah. yeah. Um, Cody, I want to ask you first. I, I was wondering, w when were you consciously aware of what your dad did for a living when you were a kid? <laughs> when did you become aware that your dad was the legendary Dusty Rhodes? There's a bunch of kind of like eye-opening moments mm -hmm. um, because he was 39 when he had me and he had kind of passed the prime of his career already. Mm -hmm. But I remember I went to a Blockbuster video, and they had a um, wrestling section. And they had a pretty well stocked. They yeah. had like a lot of early WWF pay-per-views, but they also had uh, War Games, several Starcades, a Great American Bash. And I remember thinking like, he was the, the biggest star on the show. Like he was the most popular. Yeah. And I thought like, I don't know that man <laughs> like that. I, I know him as the older behind the scenes, like Sting is the most popular wrestler I know today. And then I had a moment there. We were at the Omni in Atlanta and Sting went out to the, you know, his car behind the arena leaving the show and the crowd, you could hear them waiting. They were cheering for him. And my dad like gave me his hand, like hold up. And then he came out and he got just as big a reception from this Atlanta crowd. Wow. And I remember in that moment being like, damn, like people, he was really popular in wrestling. Yeah. It took me some time and it still doesn't totally register with me or with other fans of our industry how important he was as far as the advent of pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Without him and Vince fighting each other tooth and nail via closed circuit, which then would ultimately become pay-per-view, it would have changed the entire pay-per-view industry. So I'm getting it more and more. You know, he mm -hmm. uh, he did all he did a lot behind the scenes, more the, more behind the scenes than he did in the ring, and it's it's uh, it's a great thing to be a. Uh, be able to share that legacy. I was thinking about this the other day, that your dad was in WCW at the same time that Chris Jericho was. Mm. Did you ever meet Chris when you were a kid? Yeah. Do you remember that first time you met him? I met, um, you know, Lionheart Chris Jericho, yeah. with, like the ponytail, and he was the nicest guy ever, and it's such a, you know, difference between the the dick he is now today uh <laughs> but he's no no he was the nicest guy ever and i was actually a big fan of chris and chris knows this i asked my dad i rarely ever did this it was kind of taboo in my family i asked for an autograph of chris's when he went on the road can you get me an autograph i had a collection i didn't have chris and he did and a few years ago i found that autograph and i showed it to chris and chris told me he's like i I did not. That is not my signature. Like, <laughs> so wow. my dad just got an eight by ten and just signed it. Chris Jericho. Just clearly, he probably was annoyed that I wanted this autograph in the first place. But I treasured it, and then he told me it wasn't really him. But I never got a, a new autograph from him. And now you're his boss. That's kind of crazy. He doesn't really like that. No. <laughs> he, uh, I don't know if Tony or or Kenny told you. Chris was not genuinely aware that the EVP thing was real. Really? Until I think I sent my first talent memo or a brief of some sort. And then it became a, uh, wait, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, and, and ever since then, it's, you know, been what it is, but yeah. it's, uh, it's a learning curve for us all, <laughs> you know? Brandy, I know you, you did watch wrestling when, when you were a kid. Um, what were some of the other things that you were into? Like, um, were you a massive wrestling fan or did you spread your interest out? Oh no, so I, I was a wrestling fan because my brother was a wrestling fan. Yeah. My brother is four years older than me. And so anything that he wanted to do, that was cool to me. So he was really into wrestling, always wanted to watch pay-per-views. My parents would order them. We got him taken away because my brother cried and I wish, I wish I remember exactly which pay-per-view this was because it was a, a real meltdown about <laughs> the finish of whatever the match was. And my parents said like, that's it. We're done with wrestling because you can't handle this. So then that ended up being my gap in my life between wrestling, you know, yeah. when I got started back again. But um, I was a figure skater. I was into figure skating. That's all that mattered. That's what I breathed. Uh, I was at the ice arena eight hours a day um, training. I watched skating. I only 
did things related to figure skating. Huh. Never had any other chief sports. Uh, wrestling got taken away from me as a kid too <laughs> during the Attitude Era. There was um, specifically it was uh, gold dust that my mom Ooh, was yeah. not a big fan of. I mean, there was a lot there, but it was kind of like the whole. She, I don't know. It was very envelope pushing. <laughs> yes, for it was. The climate and period of time. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brandy, what I, I love is you've shown so much improvement in the ring. Your last match was so good. I, like I, I really admire how much you've like jumped into it. And I know that you're also very hands-on with the women's division. Like you're not just a figurehead. Like you're really doing it. And uh, now this is just going to be the compliment portion. And Cody, uh, <laughs> I thought there was a question. No, 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 no. I Thank will get to a question. <laughs> and Cody, you have when you came out and did these press conferences. I love these press conferences afterwards because yeah. as a wrestling fan, to hear the vision from the people who run it and sort of that like debrief of this is what we did. Like you were so inspiring to me yeah. in terms of like this guy is really leading this thing. Like it's it's got good legs under it. Yeah. And uh, there's no question. I'm just like so hyped oh, about that. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. I was really. waiting for the butt. No, no butt at all. Mm. But, you oh. know, oh, I did that totally <laughs> not on purpose. No butts. Uh, how do you balance work and just your lives outside of wrestling? Because I'm sure you bring it home. It's almost impossible not to. How do you do that? So it's kind of twofold for me with the actual wrestling. I've had to do all this different, a whole new set of balancing and mental math Yeah. because now we're backstage and go position producing. So you go from thinking like, okay, in the second match, I got to put my tights on like <laughs> the most, cause my match is for like these crazy doing the night before I do the whole thing in my mind. Like this is when I have to get up. I yeah. can't sit here all day. Like it's, it's wild in terms of balancing. We've been working so much, so much, so much. I've recently taken a dive into retro video game hardware. It's you bought my, two N sixty fours, right? I got two sixty fours. I got two sixty fours. I got a Super Famicom that's been like Geo Switch. There's this group uh, who takes the Geo Block off, so I can play all these awesome Japanese games. It runs through an RGB SCART, so like I get the best. Link to the past you've ever seen. I'm very actually. When we get home, all of it arrives. Oh, yeah, well, my my cabinet came in today. So we yeah. have rival like hobbies. Now. Okay. Both of our hobbies drive each other crazy. <laughs> so mine has been the record collecting. Oh, my yeah. record collection is getting insane. Like I had to order a new cabinet just to hold the records because I started collecting maybe in January and I've overthrown the space that I already have. Uh -huh. A real like get out of my head and just be brandy and not be at work or wrestling is to just go to the record store and yeah. just thumb through records and find gems. And I'm there a lot. <laughs> I do that frequently. His complaint is. Yeah, you can't turn. So if you turn the record on to listen to it and you're not in the room, basically you crank the record up as loud as it can get. And then you leave the room. So that means the other people in the house have to hear it. Like if you're on a phone call yeah. or if you're trying to play your own games in the living room space, which is near the record space. So it's just really like, oh, where are you? I was outside. Then why did you turn it on? He, he why did you turn it on? And why don't you flip the damn thing? That's flip the record. Got, I've heard he the same so four Eagles songs, the same four Fleetwood Mac songs. I know every... Like flip it, and flip it. Real, I've heard every Weezer song. I flip the record. <laughs> we, were, I get we had a real like argument about something yeah. completely unrelated, and at the end of it, he goes, "Oh, and flip a record every once in a while." <laughs> and I was like, "Where did that come from?" <laughs> I've heard the Weezer cover of Africa at least nine hundred times. It's a great had the record for like a month. Oh, you don't like? You don't like it? I'd like to hear the other covers oh. at some point. Yeah. I know, no, I know no scrubs is on there, and I keep waiting for it, but it's not on that side, so I'm not gonna get to it. Cody, is it true you have the old '90s X-Men arcade game? I did. You did, and you it don't was anymore. Broken. Oh. It was so. So I was really smart with my money. The first time I made any money, I just decided to buy a ton of stuff like that and forgot to pay my taxes one year just a real disaster <laughs> financially but that six player legendary x-men console yeah. which was a technological marvel mm -hmm. because it used a split screen i left town with my friends who were living in the house rent free at the time when i returned it was cracked Ugh. and 
It's I still am on the hunt for one. You he can still find was plenty with them for a while after this too. You can find plenty of the four player ones, but yeah. you want the six person one. I'll find another one again. <laughs> very heavy with the dual monitors, like incredibly, incredibly heavy. But I'll find it again. We'll that, get back together. That was like my dream. That and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Simpsons. Where are you into the one ups at all? I don't even know what. Ooh. One up cabinets. Uh, oh, they're like the the re the reproductions. And they weigh like twenty pounds. Yeah. Because it's actually a small actual system and versus the eighties nineties bulkiness. But yeah. one up just came out with uh, turtles, right? With turtles. Yeah. A turtles cabinet which has original turtles. It has those turtles in time, and it has one other game. <laughs> yeah. I have the Mortal Kombat one up. You need to get the extender though. Okay. There's an extender that you buy. Yeah. It's for. I realize the one ups are for children. <laughs> oh, oh really? Yeah, and then I bought the extended. I'm not above it. I'll play with kids' adults. toys. Yeah. It looks nice. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I know you're also Game of Thrones fans too. What did you think about the ending? Hey, every song, er, every show has to end, right? Yeah. Yes. It's got to end. We're sad that it ends, but it's got to end. That doesn't mean the ending was bad. Right. That, it just had to end. It's got to wrap up. We got to wrap it up. You know. Uh -huh. So I had no problems with it. Okay. I was fine with it. It ended how it ended. We're moving on. It was a great series. Like, relax. I could have had it end on when they were in Winterfell. It could have ended there. Yeah. With everything that went down with, you know, the Night King. I could have been... It was like the rest of it. I didn't need it yeah. so much. But as a Husky owner who was... The Husky was bought because we watched the show. Yeah. It's an all-white Husky. Pharaoh. Pharaoh is, is clearly Pharaoh. inspired by us watching the show. The moment that we finally got at the end was it satiated my lust for more Game of Thrones. Like it was, <laughs> I I needed no more. I clearly there was tons of problems. Yeah, that people had problems with. But hey, the well, moment, you know, the one problem was in the second act. <laughs> yeah, second act. So, yeah. No, the moment with the ghost <laughs> and John, it just it put me at peace. And I've remained at peace with Game of Thrones from that moment. That's all I needed. What I saw at the very end, and they made you wait for it. They made you wait to the bitter end. But he—I mean, I don't know if we're doing spoilers here, but he pets the dog at the end. Everybody and knows. The beautiful. internet literally had a heart attack <laughs> the week before because he left the dog. Yeah. But he pets Ghost, and that was a big moment for me as a husky owner, and I was pretty satisfied with Game of Thrones because of that moment. Um, when we had talked back at the turn of red carpets, you had said, this is shifting gears back to wrestling again. Um, <laughs> you had said that you really welcome fan feedback, criticism, that you want to hear it, you want to make the, the, the product yeah. as good as it can be. Um, do, have you heard anything in these first events that has made you tweak or change things to the AEW product going forward? Oh, yeah. Would yeah, you share some of those? Well, so th there have been some uh, criticisms on, on buy in. So many people have loved the main show, mm -hmm. or the the main show, the four hour, three hour block we do, but the buy-in shows, there have been some criticisms on those, and there have been some production criticisms, mm -hmm. and those are just, those are things we're, we're learning, because this isn't just, um, you know, just cinematic, there's also this huge sports element to this, and for them to be able to pick that up from us, uh, makes it so much easier to tell a story. I know the librarians have been heavily roasted. Um, <laughs> but you gotta but, you gotta be careful with what. So yeah. if they're booing them, it's that's working. welcome feedback. Yeah. But in today's social climate, we were talking about this earlier. You do a segment, and then there's like, you know, several thousand mentions that are like, "Oh, I loved that segment. That was great. You looked great." Then you find the one that's like, your your posture's garbage and you've got a belly and you're skinny fat or whatever it is they yeah. say and then you want to be like hey you want to signal boost that one right person <laughs> or that uh one individual jim cornette's been a big outspoken critic of aaw jim no offense i like jim mm. i actually like no offense but i would rather the three thousand people who are super excited about the show than just trying to do smoky mountain wrestling i'm we're not doing that bud yeah like, you don't have to watch anymore spoiler we're not going your way yeah um but most of the feedback's been really positive yeah. and the it's best feedback crowd reaction live here and when you actually do it you know perfect well i can't wait for AEW on october 2nd i'm so hyped I can't oh, we're wait. We're so hyped. Thank you for hanging out for, uh, with me.
Thank you for hanging out with me. You're, it's hot. <laughs> it is it's warm. Hot in here. I am sweating. I'm very thing. sweaty. <laughs> we want to set a new standard for all of pro wrestling. This is a revolution. I want a match that is awesome. It's a show for wrestling fans by wrestlers. Got I need to know. I said nothing. And I just died right here. <laughs> oh, you don't drink it all the way down? <laughs> no regrets. There's I nothing started... where I'm like, you know what I really wish I would have done? Autographed every part <laughs> of the human body. I love it. I cannot wait till the cameras are rolling. <laughs>